guys, it's Sabrina. Today I'm going to be tier ranking every fantasy series I've read. I decided to do series instead of including any standalones because I've just read a lot. Like, I've read a lot of fantasy. If I were to do everything, it would take so long. <laughs> so that being said, I also just want to clarify that by series, I mean a fantasy series that I've read at least two books of, even if I didn't completely finish it. Also, you guys can be introduced to my cat, Sephira, for the first time who I've just rudely woken up from a nap. I'm so sorry. Okay, so first I'm just gonna go over what I have. So at the bottom is no, just not good. I don't like it, wouldn't recommend it. Above that is Forgettable, which is kind of self-explanatory. A lot of these books I read a long time ago. Um, you're also gonna notice that a lot of these are YA because I had like a really intense YA phase. I'm no longer in it, but regardless, the bulk of the books that I've read so far are YA. Above that, you have OK, which are books that are kind of meh. It's like whatever don't really feel any way towards it anymore. Then you have good, really good, god tier. Those last three, you don't even need me to say anything about. And then the last thing I wanted to say before we really get in it is that some of these are like kind of dystopian adjacent. Like, I'm not 100% sure how they should be categorized, but they might have like fantastical elements or whatever, so I did add them in. And there are some other books that maybe I should have added in and I didn't, but it's fine, we're fine. So let's get started. The first book we have here is An Ember in the Ashes by Sibba Tahir. This book used to be a really popular YA book. I think it still is. I think it's still going. I think this series was supposed to be pretty long. What I remember is that the main guy character's name is Elias, and the main girl's character's name is like Laia or something like that, sort of an L. I know that the world is kind of inspired by ancient Rome, I think. I don't remember any of the plot. Um, I only read two books in this series. And then I think I ended up losing interest. I know that this is kind of like a fan favorite for some. And it is something that I think that I might want to go back and try to read again. Especially once the series is done. Because I think this would be like seven books. So I'm going to put this one in forgettable. I'm sorry. Then we have Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This book I think technically counts as a dystopian. I was really into this series at the time. It follows a girl named Mare. Essentially it takes place in a really stratified society where there's people who have silver blood and people who have red blood. Red blood people are just like kind of commoners, like poor, proletariat. And the silver blood people are like the royals. They have special powers too. And then it follows this girl named Mare who's red-blooded, but then it ends up that she has powers and they're powers that haven't been seen before by the elite. I don't think it stands the test of times. I feel like it's very stereotypical YA. I do remember really enjoying it though. So I'm not sure if this should go in okay or good. I'm gonna put it... Right now I'm gonna put it in good because this is my tier. This isn't how other people feel about these books. I do have fond feelings of this series even though I did unhaul it a while ago. I'm gonna leave it there. I can change it if I want. Then we have a book of spirits and thieves by Morgan Rhodes. This book. So... Morgan Rhodes have this other series that's also on here. Maybe I'll do that one first. Where is it? Fallen Kingdoms. The Fallen Kingdom series. And what I remember from that one, it's like multi POV. I don't remember anything about the plot. You're following people in like all these different kingdoms. I remember that one of the main characters' name is Cleo and she is kind of like an enemies to lovers thing at some point. At the end of the day, I think that this is one of those books that just got like popular and that's really the reason people were reading it. Some people were comparing it to Game of Thrones at the time, which is insane, because no, I'm sorry, it's just not like that at all. This one's definitely gonna go into Forgettable for me. And then I did that one first, because A Book of Spears and Thieves, also by Morgan Rhodes, was... No, it wasn't a spin-off series. I did this whole thing thinking that was a spin-off series, but it wasn't. A Book of Spears and Thieves was, like, a book that tried to tie in, like, the modern day to, like, a fantasy realm. Like, there's, like, some modern-day girl who gets transported into, like, this fantasy world, which is something I hate. I really don't like that when it's in books. I don't think it's something that's easily well done. Like, if you want to do an urban fantasy, do an urban fantasy, but I think that trying to connect the modern world with, like, oh, there's this other realm that's all high fantasy. I don't know. This one's going to no. Then we have Queen of the Tearling by Erica 
Johansson? Johansson? I don't have the author's names in front of me because I'm kind of dumb and I just made them all squares instead of making them like portrait sized. So, so just bear with me. I'm gonna mess up. So Queen of the Tearling. Here's the thing. I read the first two books. I think it's a trilogy. I think it's actually technically a dystopian. I remember reading the first book and not realizing it was a dystopian. Like it seemed really fantasy-ish. I liked the first book so much and then the second book tried again to do that thing I just mentioned with the last book where it was tying the modern world into this more like fantastical world although that one I think it was more of like a time travel thing it did not work for me I'm giving this one a no too I could I didn't want to finish it I was so mad at that second book because it's just such a jarring thing to do to your reader next we have a really big one this is the eye of the world by Robert Jordan huge fantasy series both in size and popularity I've read I want to say the first four books of this I think that for a lot of people this is like god tier fantasy and I think it's been something to spur a lot of trends in fantasy that you then see in more books today than there used to be if that makes any sense i think the issue sometimes with reading books that are like kind of like a classic fantasy is that since that book has come out all these other books have taken those trends so to me they're just like oh yeah this is like standard fantasy stuff even if this one might have been like groundbreaking with it i did like it i would like to continue on with it I do remember that it's a little bit dry, like it can be kind of boring at times, but overall it's just kind of like a classic fantasy. So, uh, some people are going to get upset about this. I'm going to put it in good. Because just to me personally, again, this, this is only for me. It's been a while since I've read it, so I don't really think I can put it in really good and just it's not god tier to me. Next we have Flame Faster by Cinda Williams Chima. I don't remember the like actual name of the series for most of these books down here, but whatever. This is one of her more recent series. I read the first two, it's like Flamecaster and the other ones like water or ice themed or something. I didn't like these actually. I bought them after I read the Demon King series which is also down here. But this one I just never got into. I'm gonna put this one in no, which I kind of feel bad because I don't think it's like a terrible book. But I also don't think it's a good book. <laughs> then we have Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is a hard one because for me, I don't know how much of like my fond feelings of this book are just due to the hype because even when it came out it was a really hyped up book and to this day it remains it's a really crazy popular book and I feel like everyone loves it for the most part. Um this is one of the like the rare YA books that I have kept but that's honestly because the pages are like sprayed black so I think it's cool. This is like a heist novel. Um I'm gonna put this one just in good. Is that mean? I think like the characters have really stuck with me and I did really enjoy it but I can't point towards it as like a favorite. It's something that I will keep on my shelf and then maybe one day I'll read again but yeah I can't really say it's above good. Then we have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, I think. This is a series I recently read and I love. I think it's inspired by Russian fairy tales. The plot's a little difficult for me to describe right now. <laughs> it kind of has like a forces of good and evil thing. There's like these more powerful magical beings. Um, I'm doing a really bad job describing it. I really like this series. This instantly goes into really good. Part of me is thinking it could belong in God tier if I give it a couple years and I still have these fond feelings. I would highly recommend anyone check out this series. I think it's really underrated. I love it so much. Then we have The Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. I have read the three like Dark Artifices, Clockwork ones, and then the City of Whatever one. I'm good at this. I'm a good person to be talking about books online. Anyway, I've read all of her like main series that have come out so far. Cassandra Clare is someone that I like to read a lot because I think her books are really fun um, and it's kind of, they're easy to get lost into. Would I say that they're like objectively really good books? No. <laughs> I did like the Dark Artifices series. It is, an, again, another one that I've kept, but I don't know. Part of me wants to go with good and I think I'll go with good. I think I'll leave it there. I think that's fair. After that, we have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I read two of the books, which are the only ones that are out. I mean, I read the short story one too. The third book might never come out, and if it doesn't, that's okay. He's got stuff to do. This is a really popular high fantasy. I remember loving its lyrical writing. This is one that 
I'd like to go back into because I recommend it a lot to people actually. So in my head this is automatically god tier but then at the same time I'm wondering if I would still like it as much if I read it today because I have a bit more of a critical eye now that I've read so much more fantasy. But for the time being I am going to put it just up in god tier because it kind of stays there in my mind, even though I'm kind of questioning it. Then we have City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. The name of this series is The Mortar Instruments. I did remember it. This one's going strange to know. <laughs> like I said, I like Cassandra Clare. I like her books. This first series is so bad. And I know people love it, but I, I can really understand liking the Dark Artifices or the Clockwork whatever series. Because those are just fun, good reads. This one is just so bad. I don't really get it. Then we have The Decoy. Boy Princess by Don Cook. This is some random duology my sister gave me once. This one's going straight into no. I don't even remember what happened to it, so it could also go into treatable, but I remember at the time, this was when I was first starting to get into reading again. Even then, I was like, this isn't really that good. <laughs> so go and start to know. Then we have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is such a good one. I think it's technically YA. This book is beautiful. Lainey Taylor writes so lyrically, so beautifully. It was so unique. This one's going straight up to really good. Part of me kind of wants to do God tier because I think that if I'm like objectively evaluating the YA I've read, this is probably the best YA fantasy series, which is really big claim now that I'm saying it out loud, but who cares. Then we have Eon, Dragon Eye Reborn by someone whose name I don't know. I'm gonna have to google it. By Alison Goodman. This is a random duology I read. There's something to do with like person and like dragon. Like I don't know. I don't even remember if they are the dragon. I think they are. I remember people comparing it to Milan I think because it's like a girl who pretends she's a boy. Is that between forgettable and no? I think at the time I wasn't even that into it when I was reading it and I can't even remember when I like got rid of this one. Like it could have been a long time ago. I'm gonna put it in though. I'm being so harsh. I expected me to be ranking everything and like good okay <laughs> my indecisive leaper rising but here I am being a little bit more critical than I expected next we have a darker shade of magic by V.E. Schwab this just like the name of the wind this is something that I considered a favorite for so long but now I'm kind of questioning whether it would retain that status if I reread it this is something that takes place it's like kind of dimen interdimensional travel there's like three different Londons red London gray London white London red London has all this magic and then gray London is like the regular London we think of today it's been cut off from it and then white London is completely corrupt and it follows Kel who can travel between them and then Lila who I forget how she's introduced to the story but I remember her prominently as a character and like who she is um, so I'm gonna put this one into really good because again I don't know if it would stay there but in my mind it's still there right now next we have the Graceling trilogy this one I can't tell you what it's about like someone with like magical powers in some reason I feel like this is a really like classic YA fantasy but I don't remember being into it part of me wants to put it into okay but considering that I can't remember anything about it I'm gonna put it into forgettable I think I liked it at the time I remember absolutely hating the last book bitter blue but other than that then we have another ve shop vicious this is a duology i talked about it recently it follows two people who used to be roommates in college they found out that near-death experiences can give you like supernatural powers and now these people are enemies this one's really good i'm putting it straight up there like no doubt in my mind that's a solid series then we have kiss of deception which i want to say is mary e pearson could be wrong but whatever this is a really popular YA one follows like a princess who doesn't want to get married so she runs away which is so YA um and then two people come after her like an assassin who wants to kill her obviously that's what an assassin does and then the prince that like wanted to marry her I don't remember anything else I think like part of me wants but unforgettable even though I clearly remember the plot of this I remember liking it at the time but not that much I'll leave it forgettable because like I said it is very typical YA with the kind of premise then we have The Young Elites by Marie Lu. This book was cool. Don't know how much I remember. <laughs> what I do remember is that the main character is a woman and she's just like unabashedly unlikable, which is something that's really unique. It's not something that happens in YA a lot. I think a lot of people struggle with the series because of that, but 
for me that added like a whole other dimension. I think it followed this world where there was some plague or something and then some people who survived it got these special powers and now they're like outcasts in society and then there's like a group of people who have these who are kind of like making their own little secret organization to like kind of fight back. I remember liking this a lot. I don't know if it should go in good or really good. I don't think it can stand in really good. Seeing what I have in there and like I don't think it compares to Strange Dreamer or Baron the Nightingale or Vicious. I'm putting good. Next we have The Thief by- oh I said that weird. Next we have The Thief by Megan Wallen Turner. These names are just coming to me. Like obviously I can't see them on this little square that I have. This series I feel like I can't really summarize it because I might spoil something. Um it's been a while since I've read the first book. I think I read the the rest of the series except for the two last books last year. Um, I could be wrong. This year is so good. Really political is my main like memory of it that I can say without being afraid of spoiling anything. This one's going straight up to really good. That's not YA either. They're really thin books and they're just as engaging and easy to get into as YA but they're objectively really good I think. Then we have The Girl From Everywhere whose author's first name is Heidi but I can't remember what like what her last name is. Heidi Hellig. There we go. This one. There's time travel there's pirates. I think they have to like time travel on a ship um and then I think you have to time travel through maps and I think the premise is that the girl is trying to find the map like a map of Hawaii where she was born like the year that she was born. I remember I really like the male love interest who's like also one of the main characters. I loved him that has stayed with me. The hard part about this I think is that Passenger by Alexander Bracken came out in the same I want to say probably even the same year so in my head those the two of them kind of get muddled. I do remember recommending this to my sister and thinking it was like really good but I don't remember most of it. But I don't feel like it's fair to put it in forgettable so I'm gonna put it in okay. In my mind it has stuck out to me that I did think that was actually a good book. Then we have A Game of Thrones by George R. Martin. Oh this one I cannot be objective about. I'm gonna be honest. I know that there's issues with Game of Thrones. I get it you know. I'm a little worried to reread it even though I really want to because again like maybe I won't enjoy it as much but I love Game of Thrones. The world building is amazing. The characters you really go to love. The political intrigue is so cool. This is going automatically to God tier because I'm incredibly biased. I can't view that one objectively. I just can't. Okay this next one's really hard. We've got Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Merlier. This is part of the Seven Water series. The hard part about this one is that Daughter of the Forest, which is the first book in the series, is one of my favorite books of all time. It's beautiful and I love it so much. And um, it follows a retelling of, I don't know what the original fairy tale is called, but basically like her brothers get turned into swans by like this evil stepmother or something. She can get them like not turned into, <laughs> I can't, I can't describe it. This is my favorite book and I have like no words to actually describe it. It's following a fairy tale. I love the first one. The issue with this is that I don't like the rest of the series. Each book follows a different person and the people from the prior book don't really show up in it much. So like going off the series as a whole, I don't really recommend reading books like two after <laughs> like book two to the rest of them but for me it's gonna have to go into god tier because I love Daughter of the Forest so much. Then we have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This book was super popular maybe it still is I don't know. Retelling of like a thousand and one nights had a cool setting, really heavy on the romance. Like that's just the main aspect of it. I remember liking the first book. I remember not liking the second book. This one's gonna go into just okay. I can't say it's forgettable because I do remember the basic premise. I can't say like no to it because <laughs> like if that's your thing I think you could like it but I also don't really think it's good. Then we have, oh I got the German edition here, Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. I have to check that. Yeah, Kirsten Geyer. This is just pure book two. It was originally published in German and then translated into English. There's like, I don't know, secret society, these jewels give you powers or something. I don't know. Bad series. If you're in middle school or maybe not even middle school, if you're in like fourth or fifth grade, I'm sure you'd love it. Objectively, not a good series though. It was the kind of writing that's just kind of addicting because it's like not great but it's just fun and kind of a guilty pleasure thing. Even at the time that I read them I knew that they weren't 
objectively like good and to this day I would never reread them so this is going straight into no. Although this original German cover on here is really cute and much much cuter than any of the US editions. After that we have the Demon King series. Oh my cat's puking! Okay brief intermission. Okay I'm back. She puked. It's fine. So next we have the Demon King series by Cinda Williams Chima. This is a series that I fell in love with. I can't, for the life of me, remember the details. There's like a princess. I'm sure if I sat down and I really took the time to think about it, I could come up with a summary for you, but it's not really that important because this is just a ranking thing. This is going straight to really good. I remember being obsessed with this series. Like I read the first book and then I ordered all the rest and I read them right in a row and I loved it. After that, at least we're only down to one row now. <laughs> We've got The Art God by V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab. I think she went by Victoria for this one. This is one of her wild YA books. The series never finished. I think that it wasn't picked up by the publisher after the second book, which is sad. I remember thinking it was really unique. There's like a library of the dead and there's people who have to like capture like wayward spirits and like archive them basically. And something fun that I remember is that the main like love interest was like very stereotypically emo, which is so funny. I'm gonna put it in good. I think it's kind of underrated. I never really see many people talking about it, but that could also just be because I don't see many people. Then we have Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. For this one I'm just going off of the original trilogy. I know that there's like a second trilogy after that or I think it's four books. I've only read the first one of that one so I'm just viewing the original three for this. This goes straight to god tier. Brandon Sanderson kills me. I'm obsessed. This one series is one of the best fantasy series I've ever read. I love it. That's not an unpopular opinion. Everyone loves it. I've never seen someone talk about the book without loving it. Then we have The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. This is an adult high fantasy. The magic system is really cool because it has to do with light. But like, you know how like a prism breaks up light into different colors? People can like channel one color usually. But then there is one person who can channel all of it and they're like the most powerful. I think I liked the concept more than the book. I haven't completely finished the series. I've read the first three. I have the last two. I just haven't read them yet. I am still interested in going on with it because I think it's a really cool world that he's created and I remember like the third one ended on a cliffhanger. I don't want to put it in like really good though so I think I'm gonna leave it in good. Then we have, I forget the, the name of this whole series. We have like the Clockwork books by Cassandra Clare, the first one being the Clockwork Angel. I really liked this series. I think it's more character driven than anything else. I think the actual plot's kind of iffy, but what the series, what people really like the series, is they just fall in love with the characters. And I did. I really liked them. I'm gonna put this in good. I can't put it in really good next to like Stranger Dreamer or Vicious or something like that. Although I am like kind of tempted to just because of how much I love Will Herringdale, but it's gonna stay there. Then we have another Brandon Sanderson. This is going straight to God tier. This is the Stormlight Archive series. His massive, huge, high fantasy epic series that, for the love of me, I cannot describe in like one or two sentences, so I'm sorry. But if you like fantasy, just read it because you're gonna like it. It's Brandon Sanderson. It's absolutely God tier. Then we have The Winner's Curse by Marie Vitowski. Why fantasy had a lot of like politics. The girl is like the daughter of like some general. general. I don't remember much about the plot. So it's like, should I put in Forgettable? But then at the same time, I remember thinking that this book was like really good. So part of me is thinking of putting it in okay, but I'm gonna leave it in Forgettable. Then we have Akata Witch by Nnedi Okorafor. This book is really cool. It takes place in Nigeria. I can't really think of how to describe it. There's kind of like a secret society that practices, I think it's called Juju. So cool. <laughs> I've read the first two books. I don't know if the third book is out yet. I would be interested in continuing with this series. I've read it fairly recently. I don't know if I should put it in good or really good. I think I'm gonna leave it in good for me because this is like a true YA I honestly think it could be middle grade even which I think is just what's holding holding me back a little bit I loved it honestly I think it's a really great book then we have the throw in the glass series by Sarah J Moss this is just like one of those books that booktube made everyone read like everyone just read this series because people were telling them it's good which is the same reason that I read them I remember absolutely like not liking the first book like kind of hating it but I just continued with it because everyone was reading about it I remember liking like maybe like the last three once it got into more like fairy stuff I liked it because I just like fairies 
But I think on the whole, I'm just going to put it in no. I don't really think it's worth a read. I don't really think it's good. Then we have Orson Scott Card's Pathfinder series. The thing about that though is I only read all three of them because I bought them all really cheap online. I remember absolutely hating the ending. It was such a cool book though. Like the premise at least was cool. But then it hasn't even stuck with me and I read it more recently than I read many of these others. I'm gonna have to put it in forgettable. I mean, I do kind of remember the basic premise. There's the main character. Um, he can see kind of paths. So, like, where people will go, where people, like, have been. If he's in an area, he can, like, see all these different paths of where people have, like, walked through. And he can see if they're, like, fresh or whatever. I'm gonna leave it for people. Then we have Shadow and Bone with Leigh Bardugo. This one's a little bit harder for me than Six of Crows. Obviously, Shadow and Bone came first. I read it first. I remember liking it a lot. I think at the time I might have liked it more than Six of Crows. It's kind of a more stereotypical fantasy um, with like the chosen one trope and stuff. This one's hard for me because I don't remember a lot of the plot. When I was watching the Netflix show, I remember being like, oh, I don't remember like anything that happens to Elena. But it is one that has stuck with me. I think the coolest part about this trilogy is the world that Leigh Bardugo created. I know that she kind of based it, based Rafka off of Russia, I think. But I think that the world that she created was cool, and I think the whole Grisha thing is cool. I I can't put it in really good, because again, I think it's too stereotypical. I'm gonna leave it, leave it in good. Then we have Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins. This was in my little Goodreads bookshelf. I create bookshelves for each genre, so it was in the fantasy one. I don't even, like, remember this book. The book cover looks familiar. No idea what this is about. I'm gonna put it in forgettable. I almost want to put it in no, because now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I didn't like it, but I'm leaving it in forgettable. Down to the final two. Next, we have A Court of Thorns and Roses, also by Sarah J. Moss. Sarah J. Moss is, like, fun to read. Um, her writing can be really engaging. Well, I mean, no, I don't want to say her writing, because I don't think her writing is especially special but it's just like a really fun easy thing to get into I didn't like Throne of Glass I did like A Court of Thrones and Roses I have gotten rid of the first and third book and I only keep the second book I don't want to put it in good though because I don't know if that's objectively good I'm not putting it in good I'm not gonna be objective this is my list <laughs> and then the last book we have I actually have to Google this guy's name. Ransom Riggs. Okay. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Can I tell you about the plot? No. I read all the books. I liked them. Don't remember the plot. But his thing where he took all those old photos and interweave, interwove them to make a book, I think is so cool. I think it's so cool to this day. I think towards the end of the series, it kind of became like an issue because it was like, okay, this isn't really what we're here for. You need to pay more attention to your plot. I'm gonna put it in okay though, because I still think that was such a cool thing to do. Okay, so there you have it. That is me ranking every fantasy series I've read. I'm thinking about continuing this for other genres, or maybe like other little categories I can think of, because I love having opinions and sharing them. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!